you're watching HBO. to drag the tight... Sorry. I, uh... <laughs> I wouldn't have been great if all of Osama bin Laden's money was tied up in Enron stock. <laughs> you know, Osama, if you're out there watching tonight in Club Stalactite or whatever bomb crater you call home nowadays, can, can you work on the quality of those videotapes, huh? The resolution makes these Girls Gone Wild videos look like the DVD of Moulin Rouge. <laughs> And what's with the backdrops? Why can't we have the little spoons from Talk Soup? I mean, you're constantly sitting there in front of that shitty Barton Fink wallpaper, that raggedy-ass beard hanging down. It always reminds me of Don King working out in gravity boots. I, I guess what I'm saying, pal, is overall the presentation sucks, okay? And you've got to step up to the plate soon, Osama, because one of these nights you're going to hear the flap in the front of the tent ruffling. You're going to think it's Mullah Omar with your hummus s'mores. And... <laughs> And it's gonna be one of our guys with night goggles and a smell-seeking missile coming to tuck you in permanently. Say night now. <laughs> Let's see what's... <laughs> Let's see what's new in the world this week. Uh, I don't know if you can tell, but in the past four months, I've lost 15 ounces. <laughs> Thank you, Jared. He's a fireman. <laughs> All of a sudden, I can't get Clay fucking Henry out of my head. <laughs> On Tuesday, bankrupt energy giant Enron Corporation named Stephen Cooper is its new CEO. Good luck with the gig, Stevie. Don't go fucking things up over there. <laughs> The White House on Monday once again refused to turn over records of Vice President Cheney's discussions with Enron officials over energy policy. Cheney said if he had to disclose every time some business donated a ton of money and then came in to write its own policy to govern itself, he couldn't get any work done. <laughs> President Bush joked this week that between going to war and raising twins, he'd pick war. His two daughters, Jenna and Barbara, then sent him a big box of pretzels for the Super Bowl. <laughs> And, uh, Ben and Jerry's announced they will name an ice cream flavor after the Dave Matthews Band. It's called Middling Overrated Pearl Jam Wannabe Crunch. <laughs> and, uh, the... <laughs> and the trial began Thursday in a $2 million lawsuit against, uh, brought against singer James Brown by a woman who claims the 68-year-old godfather of soul fired her after she rebuffed his sexual advances. Lawyers for James Brown say they are planning to introduce the, hey, she's lucky he didn't try to kill her defense. <laughs> <laughs> and a Muslim woman is suing Florida for suspending her driver's license because she wouldn't remove her veil for a full face photo ID. Great. She doesn't assimilate into the application process of our country, but she sure as hell got the suing part down pretty quickly, huh? <laughs> And American Taliban John Walker Lynn made his first appearance in federal court last week. His bail is being set at 30 pieces of silver. I, uh... <laughs> you know, John Walker doesn't scare me. You know what scares me is they always show that one shot of him leaning against the wall. That little Chris Kattan fucking character to the left of him, <laughs> where the face hair and the beard meet right in here. That's the shaky cat, little wolf boy there. <laughs> And despite pressure from human rights groups, Defense Secretary Donald Rumsfeld said Sunday that the captives held at Guantanamo Bay do not qualify for prisoner of war status. You know, I really can't imagine the level of fucked you've attained in your life when you start shooting for prisoner of war status. <laughs> Everybody's got a dream, huh? 
On Tuesday, a Manhattan jury found Dexter Benjamin, a one-legged bike messenger, not guilty of punching out a 320-pound pre-op transsexual on a subway train. Good to know things in New York are finally getting back to normal. <laughs> no. Thank you. Now, I don't want to get off on a rant here, but for me, there is no more reassuring proof that America has not fundamentally changed since September 11th and the stirring sight of a shiny, suited executive simultaneously screaming into his cell phone, flipping me the bird, and screeching through an 80-mile-per-hour left turn through a red light in his black sperm whale-sized SUV sporting two tiny American flags. <laughs> it all makes me wonder... Was the we have changed mood of the country after September 11th more a figment of our imagination and John Nash's friends at high tea? <laughs> Immediately following September 11th, everyone entered a sort of undeniable and palpable state of shock. Daily life was suddenly and utterly disrupted. Priorities shifted drastically. Convenience evaporated. Security tightened. Access Hollywood began playing the serious music. <laughs> Many of you trying to find safety and refuge in your home, seeking the solace and security of being among family and friends, while others of you were simply too afraid or depressed to go anywhere outside or stop watching television. And what you saw on the television caused you to be completely enraged and horrified by humanity. You became trimultaneously terrified, wracked with guilt, and suspicious of everything and everyone. In other words, you became me. <laughs> I remember my reaction after September 11th. I immediately began viewing my fellow citizens as though they were cherished family members. Unless, of course, I didn't trust their looks. And, uh, <laughs> by the way, if anybody who ever resembles that goofy asshole with the shoe bombs ever sits down next to me on a plane, <laughs> I'm gonna call the stewardess over and say, hey, unless this jag off is the harmonica player for Jay Giles band, get him off the fucking plane, <laughs> okay? I, uh... You know, I never enjoyed air travel, but now I don't board a plane without taking a moment to shoot myself in the thigh with a trank dart. As a matter of fact, I don't get on until my blood is coursing with enough Thorazine to drop an epileptic rhino. <laughs> Let's see, what else has changed? Certainly Afghanistan has changed now that the Taliban has become the right said Fred of governing bodies. <laughs> Afghanistan actually has a ministry of women's affairs, headed by a woman. Christ America doesn't even have a ministry of women's affairs, unless you count the delightfully sassy quartet of women on The View. They always tell it like it is. Huh? You go, star. You've got to admit the phone sex has gotten a lot hotter in recent months. There's something really horny about knowing that Ashcroft might be listening in. As, uh... And as for what many are calling racial profiling in the aftermath of September 11th, well, get ready to pe be pissed off, ACLU, you jagoffs. We're dealing with a massive threat here, and we've got limited manpower. So you want them to check everybody out equally? Sure, fine, okay. But let's at least compromise and put the Swedish dwarf a little further down the list than the Iraqi explosives expert carrying a Belgian passport with more eraser marks on it than Kid Rock's trig final. <laughs> And by the way, thank you. By the way, to the parents of John Walker Lynn, when your kid comes home with all that Giovanni Ribisi facial hair, sporting a desert beanie and refers to the missus as an unclean whore, might be time to step up with a little tough love. Okay, kids? <laughs> what, uh... What else has happened since 9-11? Well, we've changed the way we look at our public officials. Cheney is no longer a heart attack joke, but a cagey domestic leader who sidesteps the limelight so that the country can focus on the man at the top, Don Rumsfeld. Just, <laughs> just kidding, George, just kidding. You're the man. Americans now place so much trust in George W. Bush, think solely highly of his skills, respect him on such a deep level as a leader that you'd think he'd broken his marriage vows with a 21-year-old intern. <laughs> 
As the president said in his speech on Tuesday, the war against terror is just beginning, and our success will depend in part on our attitude towards it. We need to reevaluate who our friends really are. All 19 hijackers were from the Middle East, and yet many of our so-called allies from that part of the world claim to feel our pain with all the fake sincerity and false bewilderment of Winona Ryder looking for a sales receipt in her purse. <laughs> on, uh, On the whole, the tragedy hasn't transformed America so much as Americanized it. The real tactical mistake the terrorists made in trying to disrupt our society was that in attacking us in such a monstrous public way, they brought us together. And if there's one thing we as Americans have learned from decades of public beaches, traffic jams, and crowded shopping malls after Thanksgiving, it's that we hate being together. <laughs> and that's why we're gonna fight like hell to restore our God-given right to get the fuck out of each other's faces. Because <laughs> that's just my opinion. It could be I want to know what you think, America. Give me a call at 1-800-522-8673. I want to thank my guests tonight for coming here to talk about a very difficult subject, from There's Something About Mary to Meet the Parents, the Zoolander, and now the Royal Tenenbaums. If he isn't picking great projects, he's writing and directing them himself. A, a nice man, Ben Stiller. Ben? Now, Ben, I remember when you first came walking into Saturday Night Live. Yes, it was yeah, an intimidating experience. Ago. You were very, you scared the shit out of me. Yeah? Yeah, well, you were the, you know, Dennis Miller. Well, I was supposed to rag on the young guys. I know. Because Carvey was too busy perfecting impish characters. And, uh... Yeah. You said it was my job to razz the young You said, Stiller's here to take another piece of the pie. <laughs> Looking for another piece of the pie. I remember you had that great audition tape where you did a parody of The Color of Money with Tom Cruise, and instead of a pool stick, you had a bowling ball. And was yes. trying to act cool with it. Yes, that was uh, myself and uh, a couple other guys did that film, and uh, that was that was how I... John Lovitz brought that up to the office to get that on the show. Like I met him in the lobby, and I said, "Okay, could you bring this up to show to um, Lauren Michaels?" And that's how it got on. Well, you were. Uh... I, thought, I often thought you were underused there, and it certainly has well, proved you know, out. In my five weeks there, <laughs> I wasn't really able to... Remember uh, that day you kissed Dolly Parton at Read Through, and Lauren had that apoplectic moment where, you know, Lauren doesn't like physical contact. I remember um, you grabbed her and kissed her, and he was like... Yes. <laughs> yes, I do. I do remember that. <laughs> it was, uh, yeah... All right, now I hate to ask this yeah. question because I don't think any of us coped with 9-11. You know, yeah. we always act like we're supposed to figure shit out. Sometimes life just shit hammers you. You have no clue how to re react. But what yeah. happened to you in the immediate wake of 9-11? You live in New York, don't yeah. you? Yeah, oh, no, no, I live here, oh. but I'm from New York, and uh, I grew up in New York. So, you know, it was horrible. I mean, what can you say that hasn't been said I know, before? everybody tried to be insightful in the immediate wake of it. I remember thinking... Yeah. Just shut, shut up and be traumatized. Yeah, man. and I, unfortunately, uh, I had this movie coming out like two weeks after it, so I had to do all the press stuff. Zoolander. Yeah, and it was just, it was like really the, like the most That was the oddest image, one of the oddest images of the whole thing. It seemed like a surrealistic, uh, the whole vision down there, but I remember seeing one of the buses like the bus at, yeah, with no. uh, Zoolander on the side of it. No, it was it's... all destroyed and crushed. And yeah, thing I mean, and... it's, you know, it's... Never in a million years do you think when you're working on a movie or something you're going to have to, you know, go through that when you're putting it out. But then you think, what the hell does it even matter? Yeah, it doesn't matter. And then you don't even want to talk about the movie. And then you have to, you know, you go out and do it. So it was a very, it was a weird experience. But I think for people who weren't directly affected by it, not, not knowing somebody specifically, you know, um, it's like anything else that happens, you know, the t with time, it sort of, it recedes as much as you hang on to it, it you know the the visceral feeling kind of do you starts find yourself to... getting guilty that you're letting some of the because i find myself getting guilty some days that i'm letting some of the bullshit creep back in yeah i mean i feel like a lot of it is creeped back in and um you know i mean you hear the warnings on tv you know it, i think there's that stress level that's there about just kind of like our our lives and you know what could happen but for everybody else who wasn't affected by it, i think you know there, there's a certain 
you kind of want to go forward. I, I, I feel, and there is a guilt that goes along with it, wanting to go forward and wanting to not feel like anything has changed, too. You want to just kind of not think about yeah, it. Yeah, I didn't get pissed at traffic for a while. I remember thinking, what an asshole life I'm leading. I'm actually letting right. morons in other cars fuck my day up. And I'll right. just chill out. I was letting people go and, you right. know, just sitting there like an Amish guy, you know. I'm at a yeah. stop sign for three and a half hours, you know. No, yeah. and, and now I'm, you know, back to, hey, motherfucker! Right. No, it's like, it's like a bad breakup, you know, when you, like, when, when it first happens, you're like, I, you know, you're never going to eat again and you don't want to have sex. And then, you know, six months later, it's back to the hookers and pound cake. <laughs> you know, at least for me. Well, those are the surface things that don't matter, but uh, underneath, there have to be some deeper changes, don't you yeah, think? No, I mean, I, what, what, what has changed substantively I mean, in you? Anything? I think the, you know, the, the kind of the immediate thing is like just our general awareness of the rest of the world's opinion of this country. Or, you know, the fact that we're not a well-loved country all over the world. And I think that's like a really, a real thing that I felt. Kind of this all of a sudden just being aware of how much anger and hatred there is yeah, towards but beyond anger and hatred America. Don't, don't you watch these other countries now and think it's a fucking madhouse there I know we're supposed oh, yeah. to take it all on us now and everybody wants us to say we well, have so much you should feel guilty about it and they had a little I've actually heard people saying you know this is why they've gone after you listen I look at some of those countries and I think they got to get their shit together I mean all it is is broken cinder blocks you know it's, it, yeah. well it's I think it's you know very conflicted feeling because I'm very happy to live in America and to have all, all the great advantages of being in America but then I you know I know as well as you know it's what you you know you joke about all the time is how fucked up the country is too and you know, all the you know you know our government is not the uh, you know the kind of uh, kind of great entity that we would love it to be but, it, you know, the reality is there's a lot of... Yeah, but do you look for anything, really, at the end of the day out of government? I mean, I don't well, look for anything. It's no. a sham. I look at guys from both sides of it, and they seem like they're completely full of shit. I agree with Trent you. Trent Lott, Tom Daschle, same guy, less hairspray. You know? <laughs> I agree with you 100%. But, you know, also the reality is that we have to live in within the parameters of this country. You know, So I think you have to... I'm a very... I've tried to remain apolitical, pretty much, for, for most of my life, and I, and I feel like I, you can't really do that. I feel like I can't really do that. Cause How I, are you changing with people on a day-to-day -day level? Have you had any substantive cha changes with strangers? Or I, I think, you know, immediately afterwards, it's the same thing you went through, which was trying to be nice, letting people cut in in traffic, um, trying not to be uh, as judgmental, trying to put out positive energy, and, you know, it's... You're back to square one. I'm back to square one. But yeah, that's I'm, uh, life. but I'm, but I'm, but I think there's that awareness there all the time that you know that this happens. So I don't know. It's like a weird sort of low-level thing that's there. Well, we got a phone call. Let's take line two. Amy from Lexington, Ohio. Amy, what's happening tonight? How are you tonight, Dennis and Ben? Hi. Are you Hi. okay, baby? You sound like you're underlauded. I'm good. Okay. Um, what do you feel would be the appropriate punishment for the? people involved with the 9-11 attack. Well, you know, I'm a hardcore. I, I think uh, I'm surprised those cats made it to Cuba, you know? I, I really... People are worrying about their cell size and all that, and I'm thinking, you know, fuck these guys. They should be dead. We've gotten, we've gotten way too understanding. I know people nowadays, they'll say, oh, Christ, that's such a crazy thing to say. We have to figure out their rights and all that. You know, fuck their rights. They killed innocent people. They're punched in at the World Trade Center. They're sitting there, and the people that they're fighting for flew planes into them. I'm, I'm just not big on figuring them out. Fuck them. You know? That's what I feel. Huh? Oh, I don't, I don't wanna... You know what I like? Listen, now having I'll said you, that, yeah. I'll tell you, as that's halfway out of my mouth, I think you sound like a fucking caveman, but you no, know no, what? No, I agree with. I agree with you. I mean, that's my gut feeling. I don't know if it sounds good, but I, what I like is the people, you know, that in Egypt and the Middle East who claim it was a Jewish conspiracy. <laughs> That's you know, that just well, that's one I love. I'll you know? show you how irrevocably broken it yeah, is. How are you going to change that mindset? I know that they look at this. That 19 of them are all from that section of the world. 15 from Saudi Arabia. Everything's on the books. Everything's almost taped. They have got amazing phone records now, videotapes. It's all testified. And they they present it to these right. people. They go, well, "What is Jewish, Jewish people?" Yeah. <laughs> My parents can't even decide where to go out to eat. Okay, so <laughs> I'm telling you. You know, uh, Ben's parents are Joe Bologna and Renee Taylor. That's no, right. we've got a. Uh... We're doing a <laughs> one-man show on Broadway.
<laughs> Another call line four. We've got Debbie from Orlando, Florida. Debbie. Hi. Whoa. Hello. Let me let me guess. You work for Disney. Uh, no, no, I don't. Actually, I'm a martial arts instructor. Ah, oh, oh. all right. <laughs> so uh, you kicking some ass down there, man? Yeah, I'd like to. All right. What's your question? My question is, do you think people have become more tolerant of uh, airport delays? Oh, I haven't. <laughs> I mean, I, you know, I think we have to be, but it's, you know, going to the airport is a nightmare. Yeah. It's going, it's well, just... it's definitely ruined the travel experience for me. I remember the old days when I used to go up to the gate and just think about that one in a thousand chance that I would get a cavity search. And now it's, uh... Yeah, it's nothing to look forward to. Now it's de rigueur. Line six, yeah. we've got Becky from Gloucester, Louisiana. Becky? Hi, Dennis. Are you near New Orleans, doll? No, I live in the northwest corner. I live up high. We are considered Yankees by the south, but that's okay. So, so now, how you I, doing? I, I just try to make nice chat. I'm in a Matthew Brady daguerreotype. <laughs> oh. oh, man, listen. Number one, love your intro. I'm so glad you're back. It's not even funny. Well. Uh, you're great. Um, that's probably... Uh, that's guess. probably not the best compliment you can pay a comedian. Oh, come on. Uh, no, I'm kidding. Go ahead. What's your question? Okay, my question is, um, if you, yourself, do you think that your safety, in other words, is the measures and the changes and everything, do you personally feel safer at this moment than you did before September the 11th or de December the 11th? Make you December? change your attitude well, about safety completely. December? Listen, I felt safe till I took this call. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, man, I'm so cool with you. <laughs> no, I, I, you know what? I, everybody says, uh, I don't know about you, Ben, but everybody yeah. says, I wish I could go back to uh, 9... Uh, the, I wish things were like the, the 10th of September. Right. Yeah, I was scared shitless of strangers on the 10th of September, know. you know? Oh, yeah, I really no, was. I, I mean, you know, there's certain people I just uh, give me the creeps. I, honest to God, it has nothing to do with his background or his sect or all that. If a cat like that Richard Reed guy gets on a plane, sits next to you, aren't you going to go, yeah. the fuck is this? Yeah. Did you know that they, they interrogated Richard Reed, though, and they found out he's not a terrorist? He just really, really hated his shoes? <laughs> Sort of a pedophile. Yeah. Uh, pedophile. Exactly. Yes. Now, uh, let me just ask you this. I met your wife. She's a beautiful young lady. I met her at the Christmas party this year. Yes. And uh, you, you come from such a uh, good marriage. Certainly, mm -hmm. you will no doubt want to have kids soon. And uh, we're, are we're you gonna, influenced by You're it? actually going to have a kid soon. So oh, it's you are. Yeah, in a couple, of, like, three months. And it's, it's yeah, it's weird. I mean, would you, I, would you teach your kid to be like an open-hearted, I'd like to teach the world to king, sing fucking Pepsi ad? Or would you say, if hey, listen, money, son, there's, yeah. <laughs> would you say there's some assholes in the world, kid? Uh, I, you know what? I feel so totally terrified and unprepared to raise a child <laughs> that before September 11th, after, that, uh, it, you know, I, I think you have to try to just give them a balanced view. I don't know. I mean, what do you do? Well, Seriously, um, I think at some point you'll look you to your say? kids what and say, you... listen, it's not candy land. Uh, most people are nice. There's some real shitheads. Avoid the shitheads. Uh, how, old are you? how old are you? My kids are three and four. So, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for coming All on. Right, ben yeah. Stiller, ladies and gentlemen. Now, I know you all, we all like the same big three or four films of Ben, but you have to get that, uh, the film about the superheroes who are all broken to some extent. Have you ever seen Mr. Furious? Now, that, what is the name of that film? Mystery Men. Mystery Men. You have to get that film. Ben plays an impotent character named Mr. Furious, and his only, his only talent... No, I called you right after that. I love that movie. His only talent is to get angry. And, uh... Thank you. It's just so funny. Thank you. <laughs> All right, Ben's yeah. yeah. Huh? I like it. Standing behind the president at all times now is an elite military unit specifically trained in the Heimlich maneuver. <laughs> Hearing the familiar thud, a disappointed Dick Cheney and his assistant realized President Bush tried to go out the back door again. <laughs> so I wanted to float a couple Bush jokes. I've been away for months. I didn't know. I guess he's Superman now. Okay. <laughs> 
Dick Gephardt, Trent Lott, and Tom Daschle spent this week trying to convince eight other senators to join them in a lighthearted hip plot to rob casinos in Vegas. <laughs> Senator Larry Craig unveiled the Republican Party's new energy conservation policy. Here's an idea. Fewer fucking microphones on the podium, okay? <laughs> no matter what AFL-CIO President John Sweeney said, all Reverend Jesse Jackson could think was, that man is white, white, and white, <laughs> white motherfucking whitey, white McWhitey. <laughs> Palestinian leader Yasser Arafat dishes some inside dirt on Tony Randall. No one knows. This week on Inside the Actors Studio with Jimmy Lipton. <laughs> on Monday, the U.S. Border Patrol stepped up inspections of all trucks after several Enron executives were found curled up underneath <laughs> trying to sneak into Mexico. The main difference between Israeli Foreign Minister Shimon Peres and Israeli Prime Minister Ariel Sharon is that Sharon is always wondering about the next thing he's going to eat, while Perez is always wondering about the last thing he ate. <laughs> Vatican insiders say they have never been able to figure out how exactly it is that Pope John Paul II has grandchildren. <laughs> and remember, Cambodia land visitors, you parked in section Pol Pot. That's section Pol Pot. <laughs> Many believe interim Afghani leader Hamid Karzai might have gotten more done on his visit to Washington, D.C. this week had he not spent the entire time camped out in line for Destiny's Child's tickets. <laughs> And here, Secretary of State Colin Powell waits patiently as Afghan leader Karzai, unfamiliar with indoor plumbing, takes a shit in the bushes. <laughs> On Tuesday, Malaysia opened its first KFC. <laughs> One thing hampering California gubernatorial candidate Richard Reardon's tough anti-drug stance is his habit when touring DEA drug bust of dipping his finger in and saying, man, that shit is primo. <laughs> There's nothing that cracks San Francisco Mayor Willie Brown up more than Rudy Giuliani's impression of a crazy Chinese guy. <laughs> and finally, here we see congressional leaders trying to stay dry during yet another Enron shitstorm. <laughs> Guess what, folks? That's the news. I'm out of here. Good night.